Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I just wanted to pop up the camera right now and give you a quick update on some personal stuff going on. I'm here in the US. We are now in end of June, almost July. I'm not sure when this video will go up, but probably pretty soon. I feel kind of hesitant to make these kind of videos because it doesn't really have a point like my other videos such as like talking about religion or vlogging or Brazil or the favela like where there's an actual topic I guess there's a topic it's health and it's me but I feel like strangely narcissistic talking about myself but at the same time I know that a lot of you care and have been asking me for an update especially regarding my gall stones which I made a video about doing the cleanse I do think that there's a bigger message to share with you about health in general health is wealth and all that if I can help any person going through something similar that's enough reason right there for me to make this video I am almost 10 months postpartum and for the last eight months or so of that, I've been dealing with gallstones. They were diagnosed pretty shortly after I had my first attack, first or second attack. I had a bunch of gallbladder attacks, which if you have lived through it, you know it is not fun. I would honestly categorize them as worse than labor. And I had an unmedicated labor experience, so that's saying something. I would take pushing a human out of my vagina any day over having a gallstone attack. It's really that bad. And the only cure, if you want to call it that, is to have surgery, to get your gallbladder removed. I personally am the kind of person who, if I can avoid surgery in any scenario, then I will opt for that. So for the last eight months or so, I've been doing regular gallstone cleanses, gallbladder cleanses, following uh, Andreas Moritz's protocol in his book. It's been working. I mean, I feel like it's I've had success with it It's been really annoying to do. I've lost a lot of weight, which some people might celebrate But for me, it's not really something. It's not been a fun way of losing weight. It's not been ideal I would much rather diet and exercise and do it like the normal slow way than have to go through these dramatic cleanses and be tied to the toilet all day and have to buy all this apple juice and all these ingredients and like it's just not fun. But I would say that it's been successful in that every single time I've had a cleanse, I've released stones. Every time I've had a cleanse, the stones have gotten fewer and fewer between, and I feel like they're the newer ones instead of the older ones, and like, there's ways of determining all of this, so I do think I'm cleansing myself, but at the same time, I'm also, I also have to question, is it sustainable? Am I just gonna have to be doing this cleanse every month for the rest of my life? Because I really don't want to live like that. I've successfully avoided surgery for the last eight or nine months, but that has not been drama free because I've also had various moments of reoccurring gallstone attacks. Me being a single mom right now, I'm completely incapacitated when I have one of these attacks and it comes on pretty quickly and I can't take care of my child. That's probably the scariest aspect is that when I get a gallstone attack, I just have to like emergency call his dad or depending on where I'm at right now I'm in the US so I do have more support but hope that someone can come to the rescue and that's not that's not good <laughs> I have a baby I'm also trying to care for another human I'm trying to keep alive and when I feel like I'm dying and I have to take care of another human it makes it pretty hard I do think a lot of people qualify to do this kind of liver gallbladder cleanse with or without gallstones I think there's a lot of benefits to it and I highly recommend it in my case I'm in a position now where I kind of feel like I just need to throw in the towel, suck it up, and get the surgery done, which is another <laughs> big burden for me because financially I am providing for myself and my son. I don't have a lot of financial support. I'm not asking for any donations. That's not the point of this video. I'm gonna figure it out. I realized that I could probably go to a private physician in Brazil and get it done cheaper, but that's really intimidating to me and it's not, I don't want to arrive in Brazil and still have this problem. Even though I speak Portuguese and I feel confident in my Portuguese, it's just like a whole other vocabulary and lingo and scenario that I just, I'd much rather get it done and taken care of while I'm here. And I do have a lot of support here with family, friends, taking care of Max and helping me with recovery. And it is a really speedy recovery. The, the surgery I need is a laparoscopic surgery where they, it's a really small incision and they can go in and you're out within two hours. It's not like a, a big 
thing where they cut you open. If I go through the public system in Brazil, which would be free, I've looked into this and they do perform this surgery and I could potentially get it done. And free is a great price, but the thing is that they do the old fashioned surgery, which is the larger incision across your abdomen, it leaves a really big scar and it's a much longer recovery time, which again, I can't do. I'm a single mom working for my son and I and it's just not realistic. The reason all of this has come up quite suddenly during my vacation in the US, it doesn't feel like a vacation anymore, I'm working my butt off, doing every odd job I can to make a dollar, and I'm appreciative of being here. I'm glad that I have the opportunity to just come to the US and make some money. But the reason it's come up is because a few days ago, I had what I thought was a gallstone attack. It had all the symptoms, and by now I've had 10 or 11 of them, and I know exactly what it feels like. It's this piercing pain in your chest cavity, nausea, diarrhea, you have this splitting pain up and down your spine. It's very achy and very acute. I was starting to feel these symptoms, and I immediately called my mom and said, can you please pick up Max right now? By the time she came about 30 minutes later, I was just doubled over in pain, and it was worse than normal. Like, normal gallstone attacks are very difficult to get through, and I was gearing up for about 10 to 12 hours of pain, because that's how long they last, but it was worse than even, like, the normal gallstone pain. My friends who are around me here at the house where I'm staying, they were all looking at me like, you're not okay, you need to go to the hospital, and I was really resistant to that because of money. I just was like, I can't pay a hospital bill, I can't do it, no, 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 no. Eventually, after maybe another hour of being in excruciating pain, I told my friend Cheris, I was like, me to the hospital. I can't do this. I immediately went to the hospital. I didn't even put my shoes on. I just walked in barefoot. I didn't walk in. She wheeled me in in a wheelchair and I was screaming in pain. They immediately saw me in the emergency room. They gave me a shot of morphine and something else to help with the nausea because I was still really nauseous. It took the edge off but I was still at like a nine for pain. They gave me another morphine shot about 10 min minutes later and again it kind of helped but I was still feeling like a six or seven of pain. So after that they gave me another shot of something even stronger than morphine. I forget the name of the drug but I was really drugged. Like I was totally loopy at this point. The pain was starting to diminish to like a four or three. At this point they wheeled me into another room to perform a CAT scan. So I was really out of it and by the end they wheeled me back in. The doctor came in and told me, you are not suffering from a gallstone attack, which was actually really disappointing for me to hear because deep down, even though like it's probably a good thing because if I had had an emergency gallstone procedure in that moment, which is what I wanted, honestly, I was like, just take this out of me, like just get it out, I don't want this anymore. That of course would have been a much more costly way of going about it. But they came back and he said, you're not actually having a gallstone attack right now, you are having a ruptured ovarian cyst. For me, that was nightmarish news to receive. It was like deja vu because I used to get ovarian cysts all the time. As a young adolescent, age 12, 13, I actually had ovarian cyst surgery. It was an emergency procedure that I had done. For 10 years, I was on hormonal birth control, which I absolutely hated. And eventually I got off of it. I cleaned up my diet and I still eat a pretty clean diet, although I'm not vegan like I used to be, but I mean, I still feel like I'm a very health conscious person. And I haven't had any ovarian problems, any ovarian cyst problems in like eight plus years. So to get news that it was a ruptured ovarian cyst, basically like battery acid was floating around in my system and that's what was disrupting and making me feel so horrible and so in so much pain. I was relieved to be out of pain in the moment. I was disappointed that I didn't have the surgery for my gallstones, although again, that's probably for the best financially speaking, that I didn't have to pay that hospital bill without insurance. I'm left here now with a prescription in hand for Percocet. I have a few pills of Percocet that they gave me. I'm left now like in a very precarious state, trying to figure out what to do, how to pay for the surgery, now outpatient. Man, I'm just left like really um, emotional and feeling very vulnerable about my health, which is like so weird. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting all into this now, um, just thinking about it, but like it's a different state to think about it when you're just you, which is still a highly vulnerable place to be, but when you're a single mom, when you're a mom, but like being a single mom just adds like add another layer, you know, like it just makes it feel really scary because all I want is to be there for my son and 
it's just scary to think about like the possibilities like what could happen you know and it's not helpful it's not helpful at all to think in terms of that but it's just crazy to me that like when you're healthy you don't think about these things you know you really really take for granted it's so easy to take for granted if you're in perfect health these kind of issues i know what i'm saying someone out there can relate to whether you're in a similar situation or whether you've lived through it already or whether you know someone and i guess i just want to like validate people who who are like me and who've lived through this and um i know that there's another side of this that like i will get to the other side and i will everything's gonna be fine <laughs> like I, there's no need to freak out but at the same time it's really hard not to and you're thinking in terms of another human that you're responsible for that you love more than anything trying to be there for them and also trying to show up for yourself and trying to take care of yourself and doing everything you possibly can and then you get news of like you have ovarian cysts again <laughs> it's like okay well mm, add insult to injury you know it's, that's what it feels like just salt to the wound sorry guys I feel like bit dramatic <laughs> for my channel I don't usually get like this I do like to think positively I'm a positive person I think the positive side for me is knowing I do have support I happen to be in my home country right now which is something that does comfort me a lot getting this operation done here is worth the peace of mind just having it done taken care of it wasn't my first solution but I feel like I've given the gallbladder cleanse a really fair shot I've done it many times now I think eight or nine times it's about once a month sometimes I do it once every three weeks which is like the most frequent you're recommended to do it I've done all that I can and I'm just ready to go the medical route which wasn't my first choice but I'm ready to do it and I feel good knowing I've, I've done as much as I can I, it's more important at this point where I'm at in life to just get it taken care of I do think that taking the natural route is always the more ideal option especially when you're first trying to find a solution depending on of course the issue at hand at least i am alive and i have a beautiful son and i'm very happy to be his mother and i just want to be there for him it's my priority and it's really like i'll do whatever i need to do to get this taken care of to get to the place where i can be there for him because that's my priority so i need to make my health a priority so i can be there for him which i think is something it's very cliche to say, but it's very true that mothers tend to kind of drop their own stuff by the wayside so that they can pick up the pieces of the family, of their kids, or of their spouse or whatever. And it's very all too often the case that women and mothers and wives and partners forget about themselves. The consequences of that are very dire because you really can't take care of anyone else before you take care of yourself. You need to make sure that you're in a good place, that you are strong and capable enough to hold your own before you can hold someone else. I hope you guys found some value out of me sharing and opening up with you guys being vulnerable with you. If you can relate, let me know. I'd love to hear your story. I'd love to hear what you have to say and know that like we're not alone in this. If you're a single mom or if you're you've gone through golf gallstone drama whatever whatever the case is whatever your health situation has been just know that you're not alone <laughs> i'm right here that's what i got for you today i feel weird like promoting my instagram or anything i'll just put all the links down below but you guys know where to find me feel free to leave comments and talk to me down there i'd love to interact with you guys ciao besos